So you may be thinking, what is the point of such a basic tutorial where I just show you how to apply HDRIs and do some basic manipulations with them? And to that, I would say that HDRIs are an important part of almost any workflow where you want realistic lighting. So I thought, why not make a Blender tutorial about it? So we have our basic Blender scene. Uh, this is just a default scene, but you can already have whatever you want in here, like a robot running across with a spaceship, uh, shooting lasers with neon signs, whatever. Um, you basically have a scene and now you're ready to apply your HDRI and here's how we do it. First, I want you to go to the shading workspace. And there is another way to do this from the world tab and whatever, but just go to the shading workspace and then from object, go to world. So these nodes are world nodes, but not object nodes like they were before. And you can see right now we have our world output with the surface coming from this background node, which means when we go to rendered mode, what we're seeing in the background, this gray is the world, and it's the surface of it. If it's a giant sphere, uh, we're seeing gray on that sphere, whereas volume is just kind of like fog and mist, and it occupies the volume of it, not the surface. So basically what this setup lets us do is, since we have a background feeding into the surface, we click this, pick a color, and it's going to manipulate it. So you might expect to put, on, put in our HDRI, we just feed it into the color, and that's exactly what we do. So Shift A, or just hit add whichever you want, shift A, environment, that's a V, and then add in your environment texture and just plug that in. And then you're gonna see everything turns magenta because this is what Blender does when it doesn't have a texture loaded, kind of like video games have that question mark texture uh, when they don't know what to load. So what we need to do is click open. And then I already have a folder of HDRIs. You can download these from HDRI Haven for free or you can buy them you know, with money elsewhere, it doesn't matter, any resolution, whatever, any equally rectangular image, all you have to do is just double click it and it's going to import and you're going to see automatically it's equally rectangular and you can see this wraps correctly on the sphere that is our environment on the surface. Okay, cool. And there are a couple things we want to talk about. First of all, does this have accurate lighting and reflections? Well, first of all, I'm going to switch over to cycles because that is going to do our light calculations more accurately without doing a bunch of cheats. And I'm going to replace this with a UV sphere and then back over an object so I can manipulate the material of this. I'm just going to make this a nice metallic shiny uh, disco ball, which we're going to make smooth. And you can see this kind of metal marble has reflections from this HDRI and the lighting coming from it. So if we add a plane, scale it, bring it down, you can see the shadows uh, going in this direction because the main light source is somewhere up here. So you can see it's actually responding to that in terms of reflection and lighting. But there's more we can do with our HDRI. So if we go back to world, which is where this lives, what we're going to do is we're going to add in our texture coordinates. And I'm just going to use generated coordinates because that's what it's going to use by default. And in between, I'm going to manipulate this with a mapping node. And what we're going to do with this is basically use it for transformation. So maybe we want to rotate our HDRI. So the shadow, instead of going this way, uh, goes another way because our main source of light is going to be elsewhere. So to rotate uh, perpendicular to the Z axis, you just go to rotation, you go to Z and you would increase this. And you can see it's rotating also in our reflection, pretty much what you'd expect. You can also do it on other axes. And yeah. Another tip, if you don't want to do all this and you have Node Wrangler enabled, is you can just, instead of that, with your background node selected, hit Control T. It's going to load in all three nodes, and then you can pick your HDRI. So same thing, just takes uh, less time. Okay, cool. And then the only other thing we want to talk about is, okay, we have realistic lighting right off the bat and reflections and all this. But we don't necessarily want to see this in the background, right? Maybe we want the reflections, but we just want a transparent background. Uh, to fix this, it's very easy in both uh, Cycles and Eevee. In Cycles, what you're going to do, Render tab, Film. So in Film, just enable Transparent. And everything's going to work, but this background is going to be transparent. You're not going to see it. Um, alternatively, if you are in Eevee, which, you know, works as well, but the lighting isn't as accurate, whatever, still works. What we're going to do is we're going to go to Render tab, we're going to go to Film, and we're going to enable Transparent. Pretty much the same thing. And of course, there's like another setting for transparency with glass. So maybe uh, there's refraction of the background that you don't necessarily want there. There's settings for that. And you can find that uh, in transparent glass and everything, which isn't relevant to this case. But 
yeah, there you go. So I guess now you know how to apply HDRIs. It's really just a matter of environment texture node. You can manipulate it with a mapping node. And for transparency, you can do a lot of um, going to film and enabling transparent. And there you go. Now you know the basics of HDRIs. HDRIs. So hopefully this video was helpful. It is a basic one, but a useful one. So uh, if you want to support me, Patreon is the best and I'll say only way to do that uh, reliably. And I really appreciate everybody who is a Patreon patron. It's very generous and you also get benefits if you're interested in that. So it's not only a donation, but uh, you get something out of it. But I do uh, greatly appreciate everybody who does that. And other than that, I have been Default Cube CG Matter. You've been you. Bye-bye.